here we go. There. Oop. There. Ah. There is your homework assignment. Page 1077, 15.6, 1 through 11, try a few odds. And now we're focusing on just this first triple integral problem. So here's what we did in class. The problem was here's the domain. It's a tetrahedron with a right angle at the origin. Comes out to 1, 2, and 3. That should feel familiar. We used to do things like this way back at the beginning of the semester. So what we want is we want the equation of this plane because that's the top skin. We want the equation of this line because that's this line in the two-dimensional domain. So here's what we notice today compared to in the olden days with single integrals. These numbers just to describe the domain. It's just a segment A to B. This thing, double integral, more recent stuff, I have to describe the domain. And it's a two-dimensional domain. And I have you know, y equals some function of x. And maybe a function of x down here, too. Usually this was 0, but maybe a constant. But we could have a letter in here, but these had to be numbers. But this, these the limits of integration had to describe a two-dimensional domain. Now, we have a three-dimensional domain. So we have to describe it. And we describe it as a top skin and a bottom skin. And then we have to describe it in 2D. We have to describe this domain, this two-dimensional domain, because it's yx. So first, it's z equals. So I need this equation of this plane. So in class, I had to kind of get this out of them. But remember, in the olden days, we didn't have to do the, uh, the normal to the plane if we could think of the equation ourselves. This one was 6x plus 3y plus 2z equals 6. If you remember doing this stuff, we see a, a 1, a 2, and a 3. So a factor of 6 covers all three of these numbers. So I have a 6. I can get 6 from 6 times 1. 3 times 2, 2 times 3. So each of these points satisfies this equation. Well, then it's got to be the equation of the plane. And what I really want is z equals. And this is what z equals right here. If you solve, if you solve that for z equals, this thing here, you get that, law, that uh, equation. I'm just writing if there's no x in there, but it didn't matter. No shortcut because there's an x up here. This dx comes last, but there's an x up here. So I can't do this integral on its own because that would make this the last integral and it has a letter in that spot. So no shortcuts. No shorty makes shortcut face. So that's what's going on there. i got to do this thing out. So here's as far as we got because we did this one toward the end of class. I integrate this dz right there, and I'm going to put this in for that letter z and this in for that z. It's going to get squared up. That takes a while. We ran out of time right there, but this answer comes up to be 42. So try this one. We'll be picking up from here next class. Now I'd like to do the other integral that we did for class. It's just going to take a second. All right, so here's the very first triple integral we did. We integrated from 0 to 42 three times because... Noah Arsolowitz was on the, the, he had a football game Friday and his team won 42 to nothing. So I put this up there and Noah said nothing. He didn't say anything. I thought maybe I'd get a reaction out of him. No reaction whatsoever. So this is just a triple integral to do. No, didn't have to find anything, but we do have a rectangular domain. There is no reason to fool around with switching these limits, uh, switching the order of integration around because this is easy integration. There's nothing funny going on. No chain rule needs or any hassles. So integrating with respect to z, I get a 4xz. I get a minus 3yz and I get a minus z squared over 2. I put in the 0 to 42 evaluate. So the x lives, the y lives. Now I'm going to do a dy. So here's what happened. I did the, the y, so this becomes 168xy minus 63y squared minus 882y, put in 0 to 42, here's how the numbers shake down, calculator stuff. Now I'm going to integrate that with respect to x. I do this, integrate 0 to 42. The answer comes out to be 0. The whole class paused. They wouldn't say the answer because they thought all this work to get a 0. But here's why. 
The domain is a cube. It's a 42 by 42 by 42 cube. And if you do this, if you evaluate the function, this guy right here, f of x, y, z, if you evaluate that function on just the vertices of the cube, you'll see what's going on. You'll see why this answer comes up to be 0. I, you don't have to do this, but you can see why what's going on. Evaluate here, you get a 0. And evaluate here, you get a 0. And those are two corners that are opposite each other. If you evaluate here, you get negative 168. And if you evaluate diametrically opposite, you get a positive 168. If you evaluate here and here, this guy, this guy gives you a positive 42. And if you evaluate diametrically opposite, that gives you a positive, a negative 42, sorry, negative 42 up there. And then these last two, these last two also give you opposite signs for the same number. So the idea is this. This animal is like a hyperplane. It's one dimensional more than a plane, but it's also the first power. So it's flat and it cuts through the domain in such a way that, you know, passes through the zeros. And it's sort of, it's like this, the hyper volume above this plane, the hyper volume above this hyperplane is the same as the hyper volume below this hyperplane. And so, so the positive and negatives all cancel out. But you can see the positives and the negatives all canceling out in opposite corners. That happens for every point in this cube. Every point in it and on it. Its opposite number is going to be evaluated to the opposite sign. So when you add them all up, you get zero. We have seen this happen in lower dimensions. Now I just can't picture it, but it's the same kind of thing. It's the same kind of thing. So the homework, try a few on your own. And we'll pick up from there on Tuesday. Oh, and I got your quiz grade, but I can't show you because this is a public video. So talk to you later.